it's it's so cool. And that's something that I'll use with some of our members. If I know their parents, especially if they have the young kiddos that are up in child watch watching us, um, and I see them losing momentum, I, you know, all right, would you be slowing down if your, your child was right here in front of you? Look, the biggest podcast where you can learn them lessons. Line for line where you can learn from different sections. Made it out the mud, come tell your story, blessings. Never know who listening, never know who's stressing. Devon gave you a voice, come speak your honest truth. Line for line, go ball for ball, it's up to you. Wanna talk sports, gov, and politics? Wanna talk about where you from and your accomplishments? The line for line is really where you need to be. A platform that's really made for folks like you and me. All right. Just like that, we're back in another very special episode of Line for Line Podcast. We're here with a very special guest. And when I say special, this lady has been putting up motivation for years and transforming lives with her fitness training and just being the trainer at Burn Boot Camp. We're standing here with Stacy. Can you? Yes, sir. Stacey, how are you feeling? I am fantastic. How are you doing, Devin? Thanks I'm for actually, having me. Yes, ma'am. Of course. I'm actually pretty good on this Saturday. So when we start Line for Line, the most cliche thing that we like to do when we start our show is just tell the people just a little bit about you. Introduce Stacy to the viewers. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I've got the most important thing in my life you're going to hear me talk about is going to be my kiddos. Mm -hmm. um, and when I say kiddos, they're whole grown adults at this point. My daughter, Sydney, is 21 and she is graduating from uh, nursing school coming up uh, next week. I know, so ridiculously proud of her jumping into the medical field. She can go out there and change some lives. And then there's my boy, Mitchell, who just turned 20. He is stationed currently at Camp Lejeune. He is uh, in the U.S. Marine Corps. So. Nice. Proud mom. Both my kid are, kids are complete badasses, and mm -hmm. it's it's absolutely the best feeling in the world. Outside of that, I have an amazing husband of 10 years. I've got uh, two uh, bulldogs, English bulldogs at home, Stogie and Semper. Um, Semper Fi. Semper Fi. <laughs> wonder where that came from, right? And then um, outside of training, which is a, a huge passion and, and fills my heart, fills my bucket, um, I also have been in the um, lighting industry for 24 years. I was in regional sales for a long time, traveling half the U.S. Now I just have some statewide things that I do. So. Nice, nice. Now I'm pretty sure a lot of people want to know, how did the whole training thing come apart? about excuse me and where were you at with things when the training did introduce itself to your life yeah absolutely so i became a member at um burn boot camp mount pleasant in october 2019 one of the first uh -huh. people to walk through the doors yeah and um just freaking fell in love with it just like everybody that walks through those burn boot camp doors does um transformed my life um to be honest with you uh fitness wise mentally it just really hit um, and uh, a little over two years ago, um, our former head trainer, Luke Kogopian, uh, asked to have a chat with me and um, asked if I'd be interested in becoming certified and becoming a trainer and if I could fit that into my schedule. And um, yeah, it was something that I'd always thought, dang, this would be really amazing to have this platform, to be able to change lives, to be able to motivate, to be able to inspire. Um, but then I thought, dang, at the time, I was going to be 47 years old. People are going to want to listen to me at that point. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I went out, got certified, um, and uh, April 1st of this year was my two years since I've been uh, a personal trainer. Wait, 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 wait. So I'm learning so much new here on Line for Line. That's Let's why go. Line for Line podcast is a special podcast because you just learn stuff about your guests. But so you weren't a trainer when you started going to Burn Boot Camp. You became a trainer on the journey while at Burn Boot Camp. Absolutely. I walked through the doors at Burn Boot Camp. Um, kind of my main thing was, oh, I had this goal weight in mind. I wanted to lose all this weight. I wanted, you know, and um, I love the way Burn put into my head um, about wanting to be strong. Strong is beautiful. Strong is just, strong feels good, mm -hmm. better than skinny. Um, and I loved being able to pick up some big weights. I loved being able to um, just build that confidence. Um, and actually that, that quote goal weight that I had in mind, I'm nowhere close to that, but I can lift weights. I never thought I was going to be able to lift. I can do things with my body. I never thought I'd be able to do. And I just fell in love with the process mm -hmm. of it all. And I think it took me getting there. Um, for when Luke came to me, I was like, dang, okay, let, let's, let's do this. I see what you do. I see what you've done for me me to be able to have that platform to help other people that way mm -hmm. hell yeah bring it on of course of course I'm, i love that you mentioned like the whole goal weight aspect of thing and being and feeling strong because that's something that i've struggled with as well too um when i was on my weight loss journey is i would put a number in my head and i would get on a scale and i would 
look for that number and if i didn't see that number i would just feel bad and just like oh no i just feel like i'm not accomplished but the whole time i was feeling not accomplished i'll see someone who i haven't seen dude you lost a lot of weight you look good you know yeah so it's like at that point i realized that i really didn't want to be a a number watcher anymore i just wanted to work out and eat right and make sure that i feel good because if you feel good you look good obviously but if you're so focused on that number you're just setting yourself up for failure absolutely throw that damn scale out the window yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) because i would find myself getting on the scale after every workout and i'm like wait how how am i i was like okay now i'm just being obsessed with the number as opposed to actually being obsessed with the results and the work that i did put in as well too absolutely now back to your story though young lady what was it like for you when he came up to you and said hey i want to have this chat with you yeah it was humbling it was very humbling um and i'm gonna be honest with you even though i was in a spot where at that time i had known so many of the members um i was a very vocal member i was very an involved member but even though i knew so many of the members i'm not gonna lie i was terrified even when we did the video um announcing that i was going to join the trainer team i was shaking no way. that whole video oh heck yeah and for a living i've gotten in front of people i've done presentations in front of you know tables of you know two engineers sitting there are 150 people i've done an hour-long presentation but that first day i strapped on that microphone holy hell i was shaking and i was very um vulnerable and i was very open with everybody because again i knew these people as members Mm -hmm. and i told them i'm like here's the deal guys i adore you i've worked out next to you for a long time i do not expect you to respect me as a trainer i expect to earn your respect as a trainer and then that day the cool down speech that i gave was um, I was told when I was younger that if something makes you nervous, if something makes you anxious, if something scares the hell out of you, that means it's important to you. That's all the more reason to go for it and do it. And when I jumped into the world of training, that is exactly how I felt. I was terrified. My heart was beating so damn fast. And, you know, I had this huge learning curve to go and I had all this respect to gain. But damn, it has been a heck of a journey and it has been so worth it. Yes, ma'am. Of course. I can only imagine. How, how good does it feel, though, to know that you started from being a member to becoming one of the most prolific trainers that Burn Bootcamp has? Oh, you're going to make me blush here, Kevin. <laughs> um, it, it's just been amazing. It's been an amazing journey. Um, me being able to have that front row seat to helping change lives, to watching people hit those milestones that they want to hit, whether it's getting those push-ups uh, on their toes, getting their first pull-up, um, doing their first full burpee, or literally just finding a consistency, getting to camp every single day, and feeling good about the transformation, um, both mentally and physically, um, that they're seeing. God, for me, it fills my bucket. Um, There's no other way I can say it. Um, Being able to help people, being able to make a difference. um, I'm kind of known as the mom trainer over there, if you Mm -hmm. look at uh, my training team right now, Jake and Ian, I freaking love those dudes so much. They are uh, both wise beyond their years, and I have the utmost respect for um, both of them. And being able to be on a team with these two gentlemen that I joke with them, you add their combined ages together, and I still have seven years on them. No way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, um, but it's been a hell of a journey. Yeah. Mm. Can you just speak to some of the struggles that you've experienced? becoming the best trainer that you could be for yourself and for your group that you're training? Yeah, I think some of the struggles that I've had have been, um, we're human, right? We do have our own insecurities. We do have confidence confidence issues. And up, being up there on this platform, talking to people about, um, you know, about their insecurities and how do we put those by the wayside, about building their confidence, um, knowing that just as a human, we all have those moments where, We don't always feel so confident. We don't always feel um, so fantastic about ourselves. And I really pride myself, and I have to work hard on the practice what you preach. Push yourself outside of your comfort zone. That is something, you know, again, as humans, it's easy to get comfortable doing something. Mm -hmm. But I need to practice what I preach, push myself out of my comfort zone, continue to challenge myself if I'm going to talk to others about doing the same thing. That's so crazy that you say that because um, obviously, as you know, I recently became certified as a trainer as well, too, and I've been it. training clients as well, too. And I found myself at Burn Boot Camp or just the gym in general, and I was like, I'll half-ass a rep. And I'm like, you know what? 
how can I do that when I'm sitting here coaching and pushing someone else yeah. to not give up and go strong to the end? So now I have that in my head too. I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to try to hide from the trainers too because they're going to be like, oh, well, this guy's a trainer. Let's pick on him and make sure he gets through it as well too. But yes, I find myself doing that too. I was like, no, you got to be strong for you just because your clients are here watching you. You have to be able to push through this too if you're going to push someone else through it as well. So I'm glad you brought that up, young lady. 100%. Now, what type of advice would you give to a new trainer who's finding his way just as you were just finding your way two years ago? Yeah. Um, I would say always be the student. Always be open to um, constructive dialogue, constructive criticism. Um, you never hit a point where you know it all, mm -hmm. right? You can talk to Max, our um, master trainer, and he is one of the humblest individuals ever and he always says people aren't going to care what you know they just want to know that you care and that is really important you can spout off all these facts and figures and you know about um, all that you know studying you did to become a personal trainer but if they know you care if they know you're invested if you know you are that you are there with them mm -hmm. those are the people that are going to follow you to the ends of the earth and also be humble you're going to make some mistakes you're going to have some trip ups have some humor about it you better have some humor about it because it's going to happen yeah 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 i and i actually <clears throat> i was just telling myself that cuz Every morning I wake up, I take my 15 to 20 minutes and just say my whys for the day. Why am I waking up this early? Why am I getting ready to go to the gym? And it's like, I'll think of that as well, too. It's like, what is my why and how can I implement my why into helping my client or helping them reach that next level of success, you know? And that makes it easier for me is like when my clients, they can see me, they say, oh, well, we see that Dev lost over 100 pounds. We see that he's committed to going to the gym. He's down with eating right and everything like that. So it's like, this is the person that I, I want to get my advice, my knowledge from. And this so it's like, for me, it's like, okay, let's show them that we could do it as well. Let me get down here and show them that I'm on their level as well, too, just because I'm a trainer or whatever the case may be. I'm still down to put that work in with them as well, too. So that being said, you said you review your whys every morning. What's mm -hmm. your biggest why? My biggest why is definitely my daughter. You know, um, you got, you're about to make she, me cry right I now. Bring it on. She is such a <laughs> yeah. cutie. I, 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 she is such a cutie. But yeah, she's definitely my why because I know what it's like to grow up without parents. Um, I was actually adopted. I never met my biological oh. parents or anything like that. So it's like for me, I've always been on this journey of really finding who I am, you know, because I didn't have parents to watch and teach me, oh, well, this is the ropes and this is the way of life. You know, I had to find that all out on my own at a young age. So for me now, knowing that I know everything that I know, I want to be able to implement that into my daughter. So she's my biggest wife, just giving her a reason to live and never, ever have her questioning where she came from or whatever the case may be. So that's definitely my biggest why. I love that. And it's obvious how much you love being a father and what a great dad you are. She's a yeah. um, very, very lucky little girl. That's one of the biggest rewards of my life as well, too. I love it. Yeah. Speaking of kids, though, obviously you said that you have two kids I as do. well, too. Just tell us a little bit about what it's like being a trainer and a mom as well, too, when you see uh, your kids want to go have fun. And So both my kids, um, ironically, have uh, my, my son, before he left for the Marines, was a burn member. My daughter was one of the first uh, employees at burn mount pleasant no way started in child watch she's still a ba mm -hmm. um over there and um yeah working out with my kids is one of the coolest things ever because mm -hmm. you'll find me cheesing the whole time if my kids are on that floating floor with me you know i'm smiling away whether i'm working out next to them or having an opportunity to um train them one of the things that in our household we never ever i would not allow my kids to use the f word and by that, I mean fat. Fat. Didn't, didn't use the word fat. We talked about health. We talked about fitness. We talked about strength. We did not talk about that dreaded F word in my house. And my kids know that. Mm -hmm. And they still will hold tight to that to this day. So, But definitely wanted to set the example for my kids. I mean, that's really the one thing in life that I, I wanted to succeed at. I've worked very hard to be a professional. I've worked, of course, hard um, being a trainer. Um, but the one thing that I wanted to do above and beyond so freaking good in life was just be the best mom that I could be and raise these incredible humans. Um, and I'll tell you when my kids got into high school, I stopped the job where I was traveling the U S and, and it was a pretty cool job. I saw some amazing places, but quit that job so I could do something more uh, local. So I'd be front and center for every one of my kids' cross-country meets, every one of my daughter's track and field meets, every one of my son's golf meets that I could attend. I never missed an awards banquet. I never missed an honors banquet. 
um, and watching them go through both athletics and academics and succeed across the board um, has also led to the fact that I have just these incredibly close relationships with both of my children. And now, you know, I spent so much of my life, both fitness wise, professionally, and as a mom, making sure that I gave my kids somebody amazing to look up to. And the coolest thing right now is I find myself, so you know, you talk about getting crying. Everybody that knows me knows I'll get emotional at some point. Um, I find myself looking up to my children now. Mm -hmm. I spent so much time wanting them to look up to me. And now I've raised these humans that I look up to. They are both my ultimate heroes, them and my father. Mm -hmm. They are both, they are all my, my ultimate heroes. And um, fitness has played a big part in that. So. I think that's definitely one of the biggest rewards of the job that we do as parents. Because um, like, there's times where I'll take my daughters to kids camp and they'll come out, oh, she needed to grab three, four drinks because she was in there doing burpees. And she said, I watched my dad work out, so I, I know how to do this as well, too. And that is like one of the most rewarding feelings I've ever felt, knowing that my kid is following in my footsteps and she's out here using the tools that I implemented into her. Like That just makes me so much happy. Oh, it's, it's so cool. And that's something that I'll use with some of our members. If I know their parents, especially if they have the young kiddos that are up in child watch watching us, um, and I see them losing momentum, and you know, all right, would you be slowing down if your, your child was right here in front of you? I brought a gal to tears the other day saying that in the best way possible. Mm -hmm. She pushed through, she motored through, she said, I'm doing this for my kids, and, and kept going. Of course, of course. Now, with you being a prolific trainer, can you speak on the down days, if any? It, you know, life hits you sometimes, right? You have times where you're on just this ultimate high and you come in there and you've got all the energy in the world. And then you have times where you're just maybe hanging on by a thread. you got personal stuff going on. Something else is, is weighing heavy on you. But I can honestly say um, when I put on that mic and I go on that floor, at no point am I ever faking it. Mm -hmm. However, I may be looking at our members and I am then pulling my motivation from them. Mm -hmm. And they don't even know it. But here we are. Now I'm pulling everything that they've got. And then, then I'm able to give 110% on that floating floor. Everything else stays off that floating floor. The minute I run right over that Beer and Boot Camp logo, it's game on. Of course, of course, of course. Now, can you just speak to one of the biggest pieces of motivation that you were able to receive from being a trainer at Burn Boot Camp oh. that you weren't necessarily able to get as a member? Yeah, that's um, that's a good one. I think I alluded to one of them before, which is um, always be a student. Mm -hmm. Always be a student. The best folks that lead are going to be down in the trenches with their team. Mm -hmm. And I, I and I don't necessarily mean even as a boss. I mean if you're a, a coach or a trainer, or if you're a member on the floor, that's going to be um, taking on that um, kind of unspoken leadership role. You always have to be willing to um, be a student and. Um, you know, the other thing, and I learned this years ago when I used to be in, in human resources, one of my old uh, mentors had told me, you know, people aren't going to remember if you hand them a sheet of paper, you know, to sign up for something. People aren't going to, um, you know, necessarily remember um, that maybe you taught them that right way to do the bicep curl, which of course is going to be super important. What they are going to remember is that you were front and center cheering for them, that you had that, um, you know, you believed in them. People are going to remember those feelings. They're not necessarily going to remember all those other logistical parts and pieces, but they are going to remember how you made them feel. Feel. So as a trainer, if you can make somebody feel uplifted, if you can make them feel positive, if you can make them feel motivated, um, that's what they're going to walk away mm -hmm. with. Of course, of course. Now, as we know, as I know, as a member of Burn, obviously we have those camps that are bigger than others, you know. What would be that piece of advice that you would give to the member that's listening who maybe maybe they're not feeling seen or maybe heard just because the camps can get rather large and mm -hmm. there's a lot of people to keep up with, a lot of high fives to give out, a lot of motivation, a lot of praise to give out. What would be that piece of advice that you would give to them if they're maybe not feeling seen or heard? Sure. One thing I will tell you is I promise you as a trainer, we see every single one of you. It's our goal 
to not train one people, you know, one person, five people, ten people. It is our goal to train that camp mm -hmm. as a whole, whether it's shout outs on the mic, whether it's training a whole group at one time, whether it's giving rep counts. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Whether it's that person that's trying to avoid eye contact to um, not get the trainer noticed. Mm -hmm. yeah, does that ever really no, work? No, does that I ever stick out like a sore thumb yeah, for whatever reason. Does that reason. ever really work? <laughs> no, here's the thing. We see you. Um, 100%. And maybe if you're not feeling seen, hey, don't ever be afraid to come up to me or us or anybody on our team and say, hey, you know what? I'd love for you to push me a little bit more. I'd love for you to challenge me a little bit more. Um, we definitely try to hit every single person in there. That is our goal to make sure that we train that whole camp and mm -hmm. that everybody's feeling that vibe. But um, if you're ever not feeling it, man, we are here for you. So come talk to us. Of course, of course, of course. Now, can you just tell us or speak on just like the friendships and family that you've built over your time at Burn Bootcamp and just how good that <sighs> feels to know that you have that type of support? Yeah. She had to stretch for that. So I know, That's going to be a like, good response. That's, She's about yeah. to dive in. That's, that's <laughs> one of those... Um, <laughs> A big ones. I, I started Burn Boot Camp with uh, my, my, my ride or die, my best friend Becky. And mm. so that was already established. Um, and uh, gosh, again, I can't believe that was, you know, coming up on five years ago now. Um, but man, what I didn't anticipate walking through the doors of Burn, I had worked out at other gyms. I'd done other organized classes. I had, you know, lifted in the weight rooms by myself. But what I never anticipated was the community mm -hmm. of Burn. And you hear us say all the time, um, so much more than a gym. And I promise it is not cliche because it goes from being this, um, you walk through the doors, you're intimidated. Quickly, you feel this warm welcome and you get to be brought into that community. From there, man, it just turns into this straight up family vibe and I have friendships now that I've made over the past five years, people that I can't imagine not being part of my life, um, member-wise, team-wise. Oh, my God, in Mount Pleasant, I can't tell you, I can't say enough about the team that we have there and how much every single one of them means to me. But um, family, it, it just really, it's, it's all-encompassing, and it's something you never expect when you're starting a gym. But damn, it keeps you walking back through those doors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course. Now, what would you say is would be your biggest piece of advice to get people to get into the doors? Because as you said, some people are terrified to, to even start. I'm a victim of that. I, I would sign up. I would be scared to go. I wouldn't go because I was like, oh, I don't want people seeing how big I am, whatever it may be. But what would be that best piece of advice that you would use to get people to actually sure. come and just give it a chance? First thing would be take the leap. You have to take the leap to walk through those doors. I know it's intimidating, but you're going to be greeted with a high five. You're going to be greeted with a smile from the BA, from the trainer, and from all the members because every single one of them were in your shoes at one point in time. For those of you who, sat, who say that, you know, I can't do this, again, modifications for everything. And when we say modifications, it doesn't mean you're doing any less. It's not a mod down. We will never refer to it as that. It means that's what's going to work for your body. And us trainers are equipped with a whole bucket full of them to make sure you are going to get the best workout possible. Um, and like I said before, if it scares the hell out of you, that's all the more reason to do it. That means it's important to you. That makes means you're taking that next step to better yourself. And that's really why we're all there, right? Mm -hmm. Of course. As we're ready to close out this phenomenal episode, what would be that piece, best piece of advice that you would give to people who want to take fitness serious and just be better than they were yesterday? Yeah. So what I would say is go into it with, um, we always say smart goals, simple, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. If you go into it with this big grandiose goal, I want to be able to lift this much weight. I want to be able to lose this much weight. I want, you know, you go into it with these huge goals and I'm not saying don't set those huge end goals, but you have to have, goals are meant to be fluid. Mm -hmm. So you have to have those smaller milestones to look forward to. Unfortunately, that's why we see so many people start a fitness routine and fall off of it because they've got these huge goals that three weeks in a month and they are not hitting and then they get frustrated and they go, well, why am I doing this anyways? 
set these goals that are going to be realistic, that are going to be measurable, goals that you can hit time and time again and continue to be fluid with them. Um, and then from there, just don't stop. Don't give up. And at Burn, you're going to have all the tools, all the people in your face making sure that they are pushing you, that they are motivating you. So you're not going to give up. Mm -hmm. Of course, of course. Now, would you say your goal setting is different than it was when you were just an actual member to becoming a trainer now, or would you say they all align the same nowadays? Um, I would say definitely. I've just I've learned so much, and I don't even necessarily mean that from my training uh, certification. I mean, yes, of course, I learned a ton from that, but um, I do definitely look at my goals as a bit more realistic. I do also, of course, so set those loftier goals that are going to. Um, challenge myself. I have to keep doing that, right? Let's be real. We're not getting any younger. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, as I'm approaching 49 here, I can lift more weight than I ever have in my life. I can actually do pull-ups at this point in my life. I can do, you know, a, a ton of push-ups on my toes. I can do these things that I never thought that my body would be capable of. Um, so just, I just need to make sure that my goals are to keep moving, to stay strong. Um, not only physically, but mentally. And now I'm in this point where I'm entering this whole new chapter in my life, which is super daunting, which is as a parent, um, my kids will always need me, right? Mm -hmm. But um, they're, they're, they're grown adults now, so they don't need me in the same capacity they needed me before. So now my goal setting is based a little bit more around me and this next chapter in my life and what that's going to look like and what I want it to look like. Of course, of course. Anyone out there that you would like to give a shout out to that may have helped you along the way, gave you the motivation and guidance that you needed to become the person sitting here in front of oh, me today? Oh, man. Um, you know, like I said before, I'm always going to start with my kids. They they are my motivation, my inspiration for everything. I've got an amazing husband who supports me in everything that I do. My best friend. Um, I've had a lot of ups and downs in my life. And since we were uh, in high school, she's been there for every single one of them. Um, so yeah, she is definitely my uh, ride or die. Um, and then of course, Luke, Cody, um, the franchise partners, Max, and then my kick butt training team. I got Ian and Jake and um, we are ready to conquer the world, especially as we're going into a whole new gym. Yeah, we got some great goals in mind that we're setting here. I can't wait to be part of them and get to see them and keep cheering from you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, excuse me. Ladies and gentlemen, that has been Stacy. That has been another episode of Lifeline Podcast. Thank you guys, ladies and gentlemen. You calling or you listening? Tune in every week. Lifeline. Oh yeah, I'm going Lifeline.